Um, there are a lot of unhappy McLean residents. Um, their presence is um, upsetting to a lot of people in McLean and clearly near the school of Franklin Sherman. You know, I, I, I don't have children any, any longer at, um, at the primary schools, um, but I would imagine if my children were there, um, it would bother me a lot. Um, but I'm bothered full stop that they're present. Um, I don't think they should be here. To realize that under the current Virginia code, there's nothing we can do. That this store, because uh, Franklin Sherman is bordered right on its edge as commercial property, a gun store then has by right ability to locate right there, irrespective of being 50 feet from the cafeteria windows of children. Do I think that someone is going to walk into the gun shop and then go around the corner to the primary school and, and, and do something horrific. No, I think the probability is really small. For me, really the greatest issue for me is um, that they're present. It's just that simple. We already had a business license and we were already operating in McLean, so we started looking around in McLean and we stumbled across this place and we realized that it's a, uh, you know, backs up to a school, but you know, finding a gun friendly landlord, rent that we can afford and the space that we can afford, it's kind of hard. We really like this place because, you know, Langley Shopping Center is across the street, there's the shopping center down there and, and the giant, so people kind of drive up and down this road when they're shopping, so it made a lot of sense. It wasn't until the day that we signed the lease is when we actually found out that we were butted up against the elementary school. So before we actually signed the lease, we called the county, we called the ATF, and we called the state to make sure that there was no laws that we would be breaking by doing it, and if there was anything extra we would have to do to move in here. I mean, I was just extremely disappointed. I'm very sympathetic to the parents, very sympathetic to uh, the people who think it was a wrong decision. Uh, it's unfortunate, but it, legally they can be there. Uh, there's, uh, the property is zoned uh, for retail and it, under state law it's considered, and county law it's considered retail use. So they had the right to go there, uh, but we feel very strongly that the, the landlord who shares the same parcel of property with them and has been in business for 50 years in McLean, uh, very disappointed in him for making what we think is a really bad judgment call by uh, renting his property to a gun store, given its location. And here is the school. And there's the gun shop. And there is the gun shop. So this just shows you again they're, how they're close boring. they are to each other. They do border, There's literally. nothing in the middle. There is the gun shop, here is the parking lot, and there is the school. Center, I understand, is the landlord for here. Okay. So people should boycott McLean Services. We're teachers. Oh. Uh, I assumed we'd get some kind of backlash. Uh, I didn't expect this much, but I knew that there's always going to be people that don't want you there. So you know, we expected a little bit. The business kind of felt threatened when uh, the supervisor was coming after us. Uh, and then threatening to boycott the other local businesses that either didn't care that we were here or supported us being here. I think that was rude, and, but it, it is what it is. people who were against the store and, and against us being here. 
they weren't patrons to begin with. They didn't even know we were on Elm Street for two years. So um, I didn't really lose any business. Um, it, it just helped kind of bring awareness to the fact that we were here. So I've gotten more customers because they're like, I didn't know a gun shop was in McLean. I wasn't aware of their presence. Clearly they were very discreet and I only learned much later that they were directly across from the post office in the carriage house. Um, but there was no signage and if there was I, I wasn't aware of it. So it was um, thoughtful, tactful um, and now it was as if they were going to make a huge statement. Here we are, let's put an obnoxious sign to say you know, everyone should take notice. And um, so, yeah, it was offensive. When I was living in New Zealand, uh, gun laws are very tight there. Policemen actually don't carry guns. Um, I think they, they um, and I think with the Brits as well, they've got special units that um, have the authority to carry um, guns, but they have like a lockbox in their, in their vehicle. And I think they need permission. I mean, there's, there's a lot of checks um, before they're allowed to use them. And it, it lends itself to, if there's a conflict, that um, there's pause for thought. You know, I talk about New Zealand and having such fierce uh, gun laws, and they do, so they don't have mass shootings. Or even, uh, you know, to have a homicide, you know, two a year is considered horrific in New Zealand. We've had so many mass shootings, and everyone is outraged. I mean, the worst was probably not to, all life has tremendous value, but um, the shooting in, in Connecticut, in particular because there was children, was just heart-wrenching. And I actually thought at that moment, there just might be change. Children are rushed out of the school, single file, hands on shoulders, eyes squeezed shut. A situation that couldn't be any more terrifying. Kids at the mercy of a deranged gunman, and yet it keeps getting worse. There are 27 victims, 20 children, 7 adults. He came with a bulletproof vest and four guns, including two semi-automatic handguns and possibly an assault rifle, say authorities. The majority of those who died today were children. Uh, beautiful little kids between the ages of five and ten years old. They had their entire lives ahead of them. Birthdays, graduations, weddings, kids of their own. And actually, there was no change at all. So it continues, and the president is always outraged and upset and is desperate to make a change. It's really the people that we elect into Congress to make that change happen. And clearly, there's not enough brave individuals who are willing to stand up to the NRA and, and, and say, we actually don't want you. And you can't have influence in our government. I mean, I grew up, there weren't mass shootings when I grew up. Never heard of that. So it's actually getting worse. It, it, it's, it's, um, it's a new society of um, something that is just so off balance. So what is it? You know, why is this happening? Um, are we feeling more angry? Are we feeling more um, aggressive about life? Something's off. I think the mass shootings um, 
outside of the ones we just saw in, in France, the ones we see here, um, are really dictated by the media. It's become, firearms have become a tool to get the recognition that these kids who feel bullied or ostracized by their peers, it's, it's a tool for them to become recognized and become seen. We spend weeks, you know, analyzing the shooter and talking about, you know, why they've done what they've done and, you know, their background and everything. So they're, they're giving that recognition, that notoriety that they were craving in their life and couldn't get it for whatever reason. I think there needs to be more education and there needs to be a different mindset about guns and about, you know, these, these incidents. If, if we talk to our parents, there used to be, you know, target rifle clubs in, in schools, so there was, actual, some schools had shooting ranges. They go in here, see? Secret Sam fires bullets from inside the case. Secret Sam has barrel extension. Special missile sends message to your partner. This is the Mattel Shoot and Shell Winchester, the only toy rifle that looks real enough to carry that famous Western name. They are seen as toys and entertainment because they're not, they're only getting half the picture. They're not getting the education of the real life situation. They're only seeing the imaginary you know, entertainment version of it. The parents who were protesting, they had their, they brought their kids to the protest. I was like, I guarantee you I could walk out there and ask them, what is a Glock? And they'll tell me over you. You know, if I say, what is, you know, a Bushmaster ACR? They're gonna tell me, because it's in their games. You know, you as a parent don't know because you haven't played. Everybody in the shop, you know, believes that education is, you know, one of the keys to, to fixing a lot of the issues in society as far as firearms go. Uh, people are, you know, scared of the unknown. You know, you, you shelter your kids from firearms from the time they're born until, you know, they're 14. They're at a friend's house, they're playing video games, watching these movies, and they see these firearms there, but they don't know exactly how dangerous they are because they haven't had any, you know, instruction on them, how to handle them, how to safely handle them. I don't think um, regulations are being like enforced and I think there needs to be more education about you know guns are dangerous you know what to do and that because the regulations are there just a lot of times they're not followed so more regulation doesn't mean more safety it just means more rules won't be followed that is the, and that's the school. I, I, I cannot see how more guns make us safer. More guns is more dangerous. And I know a lot of the research, particularly, it shows that a gun in the home puts that family much more at risk of either a suicide, a domestic abuse, an accident, a toddler shooting, a sibling. Um, my interpretation of the Second Amendment is not that the framers intended that every family would have a high-powered weapon and that that would somehow promote the safety and the freedom of everybody. I, I think we've gone a little too far here. There is this fundamental common sense that is missing in our society. And where is it gone? We've lost sight of that. That's, you know, that's really, uh, it's upsetting to think that we, we, we're striving to get it back and it's getting worse. And it never really crossed my mind that the word is amendment, you know, the possibility of change. And, and, um, and people are so fierce to throw that out. And I think, well, you know, there was a time when slavery was your right. It was your, your right to own um, a slave. Well, can you imagine someone that's saying today? Because times have changed, or a woman wasn't allowed to vote or own property. Things have been amended. Well, it's the same with this. Um, hopefully we evolve in society, right?
our unalienable right to life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness, those rights were stripped from college kids in Blacksburg and Santa Barbara and from high schoolers at Columbine. And, and from first graders in Newtown. First graders. And from every family who, who never imagined that their loved one would be taken from our lives by a bullet from a gun. Every time I think about those kids, it gets me mad. And by the way, it happens on the streets of Chicago every day. So, all of us need to demand a Congress brave enough to stand up to the gun lobby's lies, all of us need to stand up and protect its citizens. All of us need to demand governors and legislators and businesses do their part to make our communities safer. We need the wide majority of responsible gun owners who grieve with us every time this happens and feel like your views are not being properly represented to join with us to demand something better. Let me give you one belief that I have. You are of the millennial generation. I think that as you all age up and become the leaders in policy, I think there'll be some interesting changes. I can't predict what it's gonna be. There's always gonna be room for improvement, you know, whether it's you know, better background checks or more thorough background checks or how they you know, produce them you know, with the FBI, if people fall into the cracks, there's always room for improvement. I'm not gonna say they need stricter laws, but they might need better processes. I think it's going to be maybe a while before people are willing to come to a different conclusion, but I'm optimistic that you millennials might make some different decisions.